As a newbie real estate investor, you will make rookie mistakes. Here they are. Now don't feel bad, everyone has to start investing in real estate somewhere. And when you're a newbie, you will make rookie mistakes and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Welcome back to the Investor Dave Show. I'm your host, Dave. Now please make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to get notified and like it, smash the like button actually to help me with the YouTube algorithm. Now in part one, we're gonna talk about four rookie mistakes. And number one is not doing, no doing, Jesus Dave. Number one is not doing the numbers. I was guilty of this as well. I assumed that because it was on realtor.ca, realtor.com, or that it was listed on the MLS system with a licensed realtor, that you know what, it has to be a good deal because there has to be some sort of steps, some screening process that makes sure that this is a good income producing asset. I truly did believe that. And I still see rookie investors that think the same thing, that they don't need to do the numbers because it's listed and the realtor must have done all the due diligence and that. So this is something that you need to really truly ensure that you're doing. When I say numbers, I mean underwriting the deal like the financial institutions do. So there has to be certain ratios, there has to be certain cash flow, the income has to be there, the expenses have to be calculated as well and you need to verify all this. So people that don't do the numbers end up buying deals that turn out to be duds and then real estate is not a very liquid thing. Once you're into a bad deal, it can take months and months, sometimes, well, I've seen it before, years to sell. So make sure that when you're looking at an asset that you do the numbers yourself, you make sure to do all the due diligence and make sure that the numbers match what you're looking for. Number two, accounting and receipts. Real estate is a very powerful tool if used properly. Now accounting practices will help you make a lot of money and reduce your tax liability. However, you have to have good records in order to be able to write things off to make that income go away. And this is something, again, I've been guilty of it, that real estate investors, especially newbies and rookies, they don't take it serious. Their receipts, they throw it in a box and say, ah, I'll deal with it later. Think of what you had yesterday for breakfast. You probably can't even remember. How in the f are you gonna remember what a receipt was for a week ago, a month ago, six months ago? This is very important. You should have some sort of tracking method for all your ins, all your outs, all your receipts, tag to certain buildings, tag to certain units, and don't be afraid to spend some money here. You could get away with Microsoft Excel. I did Excel till I had about 80 units and then I couldn't do it anymore because you want to have a track sheet of all those numbers. And then at the end of the year, you want to take all those numbers and receipts, hand it to the accountant and CPA, and you're going to save yourself some money here because the easier you make it on them to go through it, the less money they're going to charge you. The more details and records you have, the more income they're going to be able to reduce for tax purposes. So this is something, if you're a newbie, or even if you're a senior investor, if you're not taking your accounting and receipt collection seriously, you are definitely leaving money on the table. <laughs> Number three, trusting people. Now I know that sounds kind of bad, but what I mean is not just trusting people, is doing your due diligence to make sure that what they are saying is true and correct. One of my favorite examples of this, Mel bought a duplex before there was a single family dwelling and she turned it into a duplex. She made the basement into an apartment. Now the problem is she did not do her due diligence because she trusted people to do it for her. Long story short, turns out that it was not zoned properly for that additional dwelling unit. So she had to decommission the basement unit, turn it back into a single family dwelling, and she put it back on the market. Now she still made some money, but she lost a lot of time, effort, and didn't make as much money as she thought she would. So what is the lesson here? Whenever you see something that says zoned illegally, yes, okay, they might think that. The seller might have said that to the agent and they're not doing anything maliciously. However, you as a real estate investor need to not just take someone's word for it. You should be doing your own due diligence and asking the questions for yourself to satisfy that everything is up to par the way that it's listed. Now, the other thing is the numbers. You need to actually see the rent rolls coming in and you need to actually see the expenses. So don't be afraid to ask for the trailing 12, which means the last 12 months and the actual leases or rent roll, because you need to make sure that the numbers are right, right? You're not doing your numbers and that you can check that off as being accurate. Last but not least, number four, the Superman complex. 
This sounds a little silly. However, I was guilty of this as well. When you're starting out, you're optimistic, right? I'm not saying that's bad. However, you think nothing can go wrong because you're still green and you think, ah, it'll all work out. Now, this is something that I've seen a lot of people catch themselves on. So when I say Superman complex, what I mean, and it's two specific things is it'll all work itself out. I don't need to do the numbers. It's an income property. The rents will come in, the tenants will take care of themselves. I'll just hire someone to do everything. Everything will all work out. This is not the case. Things don't just work themselves out. Income properties and rental properties don't just manage themselves. Repairs don't just happen. Rent doesn't just come in. Expenses don't just get paid. You need to have a plan. You need to know what you're doing and the Superman complex is not going to help you. So just saying it'll figure itself out or I'll figure it out along the way. You can, however, just know there's going to be hiccups. There's going to be roadblocks and there's going to be barriers that you are going to need to break through and get over. The second thing I see is people think the market will always go up, right? I'm going to be fine in this asset because the market goes up. This is not the reality, right? If you don't do your numbers in the beginning and you don't have that exit strategy, if the market doesn't go up right in that period of time that you need it to, which does happen, but sometimes you need to have a seasoning period. I don't mean this type of seasoning. The market will not always go up. You cannot control it. This is something that is completely out of anyone's control. Ask a lot of investors who have lost money. This was how they were buying real estate thinking that the Superman complex would save them. So in conclusion, this is the beginning of the two part series of rookie mistakes. So if you like what I had to say, make sure to hit the like button and comment below. Which one are you guilty of doing? Make sure you check out our last video right here. I'm Investor Dave and I'm out.